Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So insyaAllah for this video, I will present about my final year project one, which is the impact of IBS implementation on the quality of construction. So before I continue, my name is Muhammad Harid bin Zambri and my metric number is 1814429. So the supervisor in charge for my project is Professor Maisarah Ali. So for this project, there are four main chapters that will be explained. The first one is the introduction, the second one is the literature review, and the third one is the methodology, and the last one is the conclusion. So, so for the first chapter, introduction. So for the overview, the IBS implementation started in Malaysia since 1960s when the Ministry of Housing and Local Government visit the Europe which already started their IBS implementation for the building construction. So the first construction project in Malaysia that implement the usage of IBS is when they want to solve the problem of an acute housing shortage. However, the Im implementation of IBS unable to sustain beyond this period due to several factors. The first one is because of the high initial cost and the second one is the lack technical expertise in the IBS. So the government through construction industry building, CIDB, start to make initiatives to encourage the construction industry to implement the IBS method. So one of the CIDB alternative is introduce the IBS roadmap 2003 to 2010 to encourage the usage of IBS, usage of IBS to the construction stakeholders. So we proceed to the problem statement. So as we know that in this era of globalization, the increasing technology and innovation adaptation around the world, the construction industry is currently developing the construction method to improve their performance and capability of construction project. Because of increment of the building construction, the quality of construction produced become a serious issue that need to be considered by the construction stakeholders. So the IBS, the IBS method has been known as a potential solution to enhance the construction project performance. However, there was several negative perceptions towards the quality of construction produced by IBS method. So in this study, we will investigate and analyze the quality of construction produced by using the IBS method and compare it to the conventional method. So we proceed to objective of this project. The first one is to provide the overview of IBS implementation in construction industry in Malaysia. The second one to investigate the quality score by using the IBS and conventional method of construction. And the last one is to compare the quality of construction produced by IBS and conventional method of construction. So we move to the chapter two, literature review. So Malaysian con construction industry. Construction industry in Malaysia is one of the significant sectors which contribute to developing the Malaysian economy. So basically, the, generally there are two popular methods of construction which is widely used in Malaysia. Firstly is the conventional method of construction. So conventional method of construction refer to the construction work which is carried on the proposed site. So, however, this method of construction have received many criticisms due to the time consuming and uncertainty cost and other reasons. So, the government put a big effort in migrating the conventional method to a more systematic and mechanized method known as IBS, construction method. So, I will explain IBS in the next slide. So, for IBS in Malaysia, Malaysia is currently taking a serious perspective towards IBS as an answer to enhance their construction sector. So there are many examples of mega project that, that implement their IBS usage, which is the Petronas Tin Tower and also the Bukit Jalil Sport Complex. So by applying the IBS system, it helps to attain better construction quality and also improve the productivity of construction. So basically, there are several types of IBS method, which is shown in this slide. 
So we move to the next slide, which is the example of the most common use uh, type of IBS method, which is precast concrete frame building. So by using the precast concrete structure, there are many 3D components that can be produced, such as balconies, stairs, and many more. So we proceed to the advantages and disadvantages, disadvantages of the IBS construction method. So the first advantages is reduced construction time. So by applying the IBS construction method, the process of casting the structural precast element and foundation work at site can occur simultaneously. So this will reduce the construction period. So the next one is cost saving. So when the we we can when the construction period is reduced, so the material and workforce will be reduced so reduced too. So this will save the cost of the project. So the last one is provide safe, site safety and cleanliness. So as we know that IBS system involves precast building, which is the component manufactured at the factories. So this can reduce the construction, construction wastage, which can lead to the cleaner and neater environment. environment. So for the disadvantages, the first one is lack of skills. So as we know that the worker is still unfamiliar with the IBS system because it is still new in Malaysia. So there are lack of technical knowledge, lack of the, lack of the expertise and experienced people uh, that know the IBS. So the second one is it has, it usually costs usually have high cost and financial. So basically for the IBS, usually the initial cost is very high due to the construction in the factory and also the machineries. So we proceed to the construction quality assessment. So quality control in construction industry plays a significant role to enhance the development, development of the construction industry. So according to the research, there are a lot of building defects occur every year, which cause the customer dissatisfaction. So in order to solve the issue, CIDB introduced QLASIC assessment form to assess the quality of construction produce by checking the defect on the building. So the existing defect can be analyzed to prevent it to occur in the future. So QLASIC has a lot of advantages, which is to determine the quality level of building constructed, to standardize the quality assessment, and also to assist the contractor to eliminate the defect in the building. So we move to the methodology. So in order to achieve the objective of this project, there are several steps that need to be done. First is the preliminary research. So the information, information about the IBS construction method and the construction's quality assessment will be explored and written in the literature review. So we move to the next step, which is, which is the primary research. So a survey will be conducted to obtain the QLASIC score for construction project, which use IBS and conventional method. Uh, interview session also will be conducted to obtain the information about the quality of construction produced by both methods. So for the third step is analysis of data. So based, and based on the data obtained from the primary research, so analysis of data will be conducted using the statistical software. So the last one is discussion and conclusion. So for discussion and conclusion, from the analysis, the common factor factor contributing to the low quality of construction will be obtained and the solution will be provided. So the last one is the conclusion. So to conclude for this FYP1, only one objective managed to be obtained, which is providing the overview of the IBS construction method. So IBS construction method can provide numerous of advantages as compared to conventional method of construction. So the IBS construction method is not only able to reduce the construction period, but it also can enhance the overall performance in the construction sector. So lastly, the construction quality assessment is really important to enhance the quality of construction. I think that's all for me. Thank you.